Felix here, and good morning to you. Welcome to CPI Madness. <laughs> What's going to go on here today? Well, we have a little bit of time to just look at briefly what the market's expecting, uh, how one could have traded this or how, how you can trade it from now on and, and, and so on. So there's a lot of, I think, pretty interesting stuff coming out here. So stick around smash the like button and of course realize in your infinite wisdom that none of the following is financial advice while i'll struggle with my screen here it is there is a disclaimer that's what you came for you've got your disclaimer now you can can go go and enjoy your day uh, right so let me um share my screen with you then which apparently also isn't working look at that that's the wrong screen isn't it it's one of those mornings. Does that mean the numbers will be unexpected, possibly? Well, let me show you one thing. First of all, I think Fed language is going to get a lot tougher, um, irrespective of this. Uh, quite possibly lower CPI reading here. Why? We've got in blue financial conditions, and they have come down a lot. Look at the 30-year uh, treasury yield as well. That's also come down. The Fed does not want that. This is undoing all the good work, all the long meetings they've had, you know, all the struggle, all the pain, you know, it's real. Uh, Winston has also struggled for you and he's made you a benchmark, which I encourage you to download at Felix Friends at Oxlash 33. These are Deutsche Bank's top 33 stocks for 2023. And someone asked me today whether that was a Freemason. Apparently the number 33 has some meaning in the Masonic community. Um, which I'm not. Though my school actually had a Masonic lodge, I still do. Um, never went. I, I, I don't think I qualify, quite frankly. Um, but moving on then uh, to, to um, non-conspiratorial subjects. And what's that? Well, look, Barclays is saying that over the last 10 years, never has the S&P been so reactive to CPI as in 2022. And negatively reactive, uh, I, I, I should add here, uh, because what they've done on this rather clever chart, it's a rather clever chart, Barclays, well done. The impact of all these events, non-farm payroll, durable goods, judicial jobless claims, retail sales, GDP, you know, Michigan clipboard wielding people, CPI, and look at that. The effect has been dramatically been very, very negative. But is that the reflective of what's going to keep going? No, of course not. 2022 was a year of incredibly high inflation, much, much higher than we expected. And therefore, the market reacted very negatively to it. So every bit of statistic you know, tells a story, but it is not necessarily the greatest indicator in the future. But I do think we're going to see some significant movement here. And, and for that, I'd like you to understand how the market is positioned now and what's going to happen and we'll look at what the big banks are saying, what's going to happen if, if the numbers come in higher or lower here in like 12 minutes. Uh, Alexandros, you were expecting me with my shirt open to attract the women. Well, there are about two of them on the channel, so I think it'd be a, be, be, be a waste of the... Um, you know, chest rug. Uh, so we're not going to bother there. Uh, that's quite funny, though. All right, so how's the market positioned? Well, Okay, I've summarized it for you. I think that's probably the, the easier way of doing it. So we have had a 4% rally pre-CPI. So we're kind of like going and well, it's probably going to be good. It better be good because we've already rallied up 4%. And that could take away a little bit from the upside that we normally get from CPI. So if you think it's going to be 6% up, maybe we've already done four, maybe we only go up another two, right? Now, very, very important is if you want this to be a rally, we need to close above, the, 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 there's a V missing there, inflation is taking it away. Uh, above 4,000 is where we need to close to continue the rally. Why? That's the way the options market is positioned. A lower CPI will bring major upside today, and I'll show you just what the big banks say, how much. Now, the two last surprises, CPI and Jay Powell being incredibly happy in, 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 in December, uh, Gave us a rally, but those rallies both fizzled out at 4,075, which on the chart here is, is this. Um, here was Powell very happy. This was JP happy. Never seen him that happy before. I don't know what happened on that trip. Uh, we don't want to know. Uh, CPI. Um, this one here was the other one where the market really shot up. But both times we've had this lid here at essentially... 4,075. So 4,075 has been our resistance line. That's, that's important to look at. Now, how's the market positioned? Well, 
S&P is likely going to be stuck at 4,100. It's very unlikely, I would say, and I'm not always right. I'm not definitely wrong a lot. It's unlikely to break through 4,100 or 410 on the S&P because you've got this massive S&P, SPY expiry of options at 410 next week. And what does that mean? Well, it means all those trades get unwound uh, and, and that core wall is a, is a pretty, pretty tough one. So that's kind of what I'm looking at. Now, if we do rally a lot today, could you, could you trade it? Can you set up some trades to chase it? Yeah. Is the S&P going to give you the most juice, the most bang for your buck? I would say not because of that massive core wall there or that options expiration. I think Google, Apple, Tesla are probably the better places to go if you want to be long something. There's, of course, risk with that um, because you could do something that was be relatively cheap to set up and would give you a significantly larger upside and, it, and they might keep going up. Now, if we go south, 3,800 is the big risk to watch out for. As below 3,800, we're going to get lots of hedging, which drives the market down, 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 and more down. So everything is possible, although most people are predicting that numbers will go up. If you want to understand a bit better how markets actually work and you know uh, how the hedging flows and so on really function and you know what gamma flow is and all that kind of madness, um, come and check out our program. If you have a five, six, seven figure portfolio, check out felixfenserorg slash coaching and you have access to me and my investment banking and university lecturing coaches and um, one-on-one in, in, in all that. So check it out. If you're just starting out, if you're just getting cracking with a small portfolio and you're just dipping your toe into the market, again, it will help you build that extra income stream, teach you how to not just trade options, but also really understand the market, which I think is going to be one of the most profitable things to do this year. So check it out at Felix slash options. And um, right. So Numura, and here is that word gamma. I couldn't even spell gamma. What's going on with me this morning? Gamma into CPI there. Nomura writes, you should be long gamma. That probably means very little to most people, doesn't it? But essentially, you could buy an option. You could buy a put. You could buy a call or you could do both. Why would you do that? It's sort of the opposite of how I normally trade, but you do need to adjust with what the opportunities are the market throws you at, at you. So we are expecting a 2.5% move up or down on the NASDAQ, the QQQ. Now, the last three moves were 3.6% on average. So it could be more. It could be bigger, right? SPY and IWM, uh, the S&P and the Russell move a little bit less. So why would somebody do such a trade like that? Look, you could literally go and buy a call and, and, and say, look, it's a cheap call. Uh, you're buying it at $405 on the SPY. This is just an example. Don't go out and buy this, please. Uh, but just to illustrate how this, this functions, essentially, it costs you $90. So you're spending $90. And if there is a rally and the S&P goes to, say, 410, so significant upside, you'll make $413. So at a 410 S&P, you make a profit of $413. So the cost is relatively low to the possible reward. And of course, if you go up more, you know your profits become silly, in theory, $2,000 or something like that. It's unlimited, the upside. So that's why people do it. Now, these trades have a relatively low likelihood of happening but if you do them around events that have big 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 swings you could still make some nice money here's another example you could be bearish you could say no it's all going to go to you know you know what and therefore i'm going to be bearish you again spend 99 dollars on a put so you buy a put um, generally speaking buying calls and puts is not a good idea but there are moments when it can be a good idea so that costs you 99 dollars and then say we go to 380 on the SPY, you'd be making $400. So that's a pretty nice return, right? You make $400 at a 396 SPY. Is that, sorry, at a 380 uh, SPY. So those are just some ideas from uh, Numura, the investor banker, throwing out there. Now, we are back in greed land. Greed is good. And does that mean we should be selling stocks? No, not quite. Uh, generally speaking, what has been a fairly successful setup is you sell here and and you buy here. Uh, so why? Because you basically buy when everybody else is freaking out and you sell when everybody else is hand over fist buying everything. Uh, that's a smart strategy. That's the um, buy low, sell high strategy. Uh, unfortunately, most of us, most retail investors do the very, very opposite. So they get fearful and then they sell. Wrong thing to do. Now, how um, as we've got six minutes here with the data coming in, 
how does Wall Street hedge this? So say you have a significant portfolio and you don't want to be like, oh my God, I you know this could go one way or the other. It could be down 5% a day or up 5% and then, you know, I, I don't really want that un un uncertainty. So how, how do they do it? Well, what Wall Street uses is um, HYG. It's one of the popular hedges. HYG is the high yield corporate bond ETF that I'm sure everybody uh, is trading every single day. It's a bit of an obscure one, really, but it's a useful one. Why? The uh, what did I set up here? Okay, yeah, so that's the way I did it. So in red and green, maybe have a red pen. Please, Microsoft. Um, interesting story for Microsoft, right? Everybody gets unlimited leave. How do you think that works? Um, well, I, I think there's a bit of a story to that they're not telling us. Uh, so we've got in red and green this HYG bond ETF. And then in orange, seriously, changing pen colors today. Uh, in orange, we've got CPI inverted. Ooh, inverted. Flipped it on its head. And what does that mean? Well, they're basically pretty closely correlated, right? You can see inversely they're moving together. But because I flipped the CPI upside down, actually... HYG moves in the opposite direction of CPI. So if CPI data goes up, HYG goes down. That's a one way of one way of, 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 of using that. So you might want to sell HYG if you want to protect your stock portfolio, right? That's a way of looking at that. So there's always a hedge, and hedging is a useful thing to, to do. Now let's look at what um, the, the smart wizards at JP Morgan say what's going to happen here. If inflation comes in above 6.6%, I still find it difficult to, re to think that inflation really is that high. 6.6%, uh, uh, it's a bearish outcome. Uh, we're going to be down 2.5% to 3% on the SPX. And what could you be making money out of? You could short cyclicals and defensives. You could just short an ETF if you like. If we come in at 6.4 to 6.6, which is sort of where we expect them to be, SPX should be up. That's the S&P 500, one and a half to two percent. And um, one of the best long plays that I was talking about could be the J.P. Morgan Expensive Software Index. So you know your Microsofts and, and so on. Uh, so that's kind of what I was alluding to above with with possibly your Teslas and, and that kind of thing. If we go below six point four, then um, really you might as well just you know. Uh, Get out the champagne and, and just 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 go and party. The S and P would move up three and a half, three to three and a half percent. Um, but yeah, fairly fairly unlikely of that one, I, I I would say. But that's basically the way that they would trade it. Now, if we look at expectations, here they are. So the market is expecting a six point five to six point seven percent rate. Anywhere below that would be would be very positive. Even six point five, I think, would be very positive. Um, you know, it still give us a nice sort of one to two percent up, um, but yeah, below six point five is kind of I think where the, the money's at on the bullish uh, rally. Um, pesos, Robert. Robert is talking about. Oh, you're talking about lithium. Of, of course, of course. What else would Robert be talking about? The world is still a good place if Robert talks about lithium. Um, good morning, everybody. Big bear or big bull? Um, well, the market is broadly expecting a big bull, but um, we've priced in a bit of the bull over the last four days here, right? 4% up already, and I think that's significant. So that's something to bear in mind. So my, my kind of summary here is, let me go back to it. Where was it? Here it is. Um, we need to close above 4,000 4, to continue the rally today. A um, last two rallies of this sort in December stalled at 4,075. Um, I think there could be some good long trades here on on maybe soft, you know, expensive software, expensive tech, uh, Google, Apple, Tesla, that sort of thing. Uh, if we get positive numbers, and we might see that 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 rally up. S and P would likely be stuck at 4,100, which is why I don't think it's the best long trade S and P here because I don't think it's going to go that much far. Although you could, of course, set up some sort of straddle or something. Though there is a funny thing going on with VIX going up and markets going up in January, which is something to bear in mind for you, you spread sellers out there. Do we really think CPI will be lower? Will we drop over seven from last print 0.7? Very good question. Um, 
You guys still talking about lithium. When's the print? The print is in one minute. The countdown is here. We should have a big countdown or something, shouldn't we? Fireworks, that kind of thing. I might get some like table fireworks, scare the bejesus out of all of you. Um, processing, here we go. 6.5%. That's pretty good. The market's going to go up, says Winston. It's a cat sleeping next to me. She seems unimpressed. Core inflation at the low end of expectation, 5.7%. Opelitz claims aren't out yet. They're still manipulating the numbers. Sorry, tallying them up. That's what they call it. Core inflation, 0.3. That's picked up a little. That's interesting. Continuing jobless claims. Ooh, down some more. What is it with you Americans and creating jobs? What's this obsession? Or are the numbers just massaged? Uh, so jobless claims are 205, um, pretty much the same as last month, but again, lower than expected. The labor market's still very, very tight, very, very tight. Uh, so, but yes, inflation is what everyone's going to look at today. It's at 6.5, it was 7.1 last month, that's a drop of 0.6%. The market is going to go on a bonanza, I think. There'll be uh, QQQ or Coke Shield parties uh, thrown all over the country. Let's have a look at the minute chart here on the Qs, the QQQ. Uh, and it's gone down. And then why is it gone down? And now it's coming back up. You'd expect it to go up, wouldn't you? But it has, it did do a lot of running up here again, pre market, right? I mean, somebody have the data before us? We've seen this the last time as well, didn't we? We saw significant buying here at, 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 at early early in the market. Uh, but no, the market is so far down 0.5%, which goes against, well, it might literally be what I said here, that the 4% rally pre-CPI might reduce any upside from lower CPIs. So if, you, if you think, if you combine that 4% up with what JP Morgan says, where's what JP Morgan says, at 6. Point, where are we? 6.5, right? We'll have a look at the detailed number in a second as well. 6.5, they would expect a 1.5% a to 2% rally up, especially in, 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 in software. And we've already done 4%. So maybe this is the um, disappointment for the market. But yeah, it's surprising. It's surprising um, what we're doing there. So let's have a look at something like Microsoft or same story. What about a Tesla? No, it's not Tesla, is it? That's some sort of granite company. Tesla, same story. Everything is down. How peculiar. Um, well, it's jolly interesting, isn't it? Jolly interesting. Well, so we have a look at the actual data. Let's have a look at the data. Maybe there's a bit more underneath that. Uh, because, yeah, there is one bit to the data, which is that core inflation rate is picked up, which isn't good. So maybe there is something in this that we need to look at if we dig a little bit, a teeny weeny bit deeper. So this is that. So let me just color code this as I usually do, uh, because you know we really are all about six. So the inflation rate that lower is good. Core inflation five point seven. I'd say that's good. That's at the lower end of it. Um, jobless claims being super low. That's bad. Core inflation rate. I'd say sorry. That's meant to be a minus. I'd say this is negative because it's higher than last month. Uh, the inflation rate month on month is negative, which is what we were expecting, really, but that's a positive. And then continuous jobless claims. You people are just creating jobs, terribly frustrating. So that's also bad. So it's a bit of more of a balanced number there, but I would have thought that the CPI data would win out. Let me just refresh this here. This is the Bureau of Labor Manipulation and Statistics, and this is the December data. So what have we got? We've got, um, let's read more. There is a whole um, thingy majiggy out here. Hang on, where is your report? News release, here it is, HTML in its delightfulness. So, hang on, this is, yeah, just out. It's remembered our highlights from last time, which is incredibly irritating. Can we clear those? Delete highlights uh, one at a time. All right. So what, what's, what's, um, what's come down? Foods, compared to November, I'm looking at, right? So foods is lower. Um, energy, much lower, much, much lower. Gas prices, fuel prices down like 10%. That's, that's, that's a biggie. 
it's something here is up that people didn't didn't like. Okay, electricity would be a lag that's up. Um, shelter is still up 0.8 percent compared to 0.6 last month. Okay, food, energy. Let's look at what about um, seasonally adjusted data. So we've got the charts. So food, energy, all items, less food and energy, which is cool, right? So why has that gone up so much? Services, I guess. Transportation up 14.6%. Shelter up, medical services up. So there is still some inflation under there. But yeah, it is, it is a little baffling. I oh, know, so you're coming up now. We're coming up now. We're actually in the green now, pre-market here. So have a look at Bloomberg's take on this. There's usually somebody awake at Bloomberg. Let's have a look at the US version. Futures and stocks rise before inflation report. Okay, they're not up yet. Okay, more on Bank Friedman. Six point one, six point five. Just enough for the Fed to avoid a market rally gap. And mm -hmm, thank goodness my puts are saved. Um, yeah, I closed out some bearish trades yesterday. I, I didn't feel super comfortable with those, uh, but you know we're, com we're coming back up. We're coming back up, which kind of makes sense. I, I would say. I think the data overall is somewhat supportive of the market, but not as cleanly and clearly because of those bloody people who keep creating jobs. That's the problem really in the United States, isn't it? There's something severely wrong with your country. You're creating far too many op employment opportunities or you're counting people with multiple part-time jobs more likely as fully employed, which is the other scandal here. Um, if you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to uh, ping them out. So not quite the clean cut rally that we were hoping for this morning. Uh, it's more of a sideways Bob show. Um, just ran 277. What about the SP? Same sort of story. We're trading around 3996, not really breaking through 4,000. Uh, we do need to close above 4,000 if you want to keep this party on the road. The moment that isn't really happening, we're up to 0.1% here. Um, yeah, market open, but futures markets are pretty much always open. So, Going up, uh, Alejandro, considering that earnings season is here, hypothetically, your trades, Google, Apple, Tesla, will be very short term. Or do you plan to stay in the trade on earnings release, Alejandro? Well, I haven't done those yet. I, I was just saying, look, if we are going to fly here this morning, then I think that that's where I would have looked. But at the moment, we're not flying. So at the moment, I'm not, I'm not doing anything um, on, on, on that front. Um, those were like long trades if we, if we you know, jump up 2% or something here today. But we're not really like... Tesla up quarter percent pre-market. That's not exactly a lot, is it? So, no, I, I, I don't think those trades are really viable in this particular moment. Big earnings tomorrow, opinions. Um, they could be wild, really wild. Um, remember Citibank's earnings from last year? The Citigroup. I always say Citibank. Is it Citigroup? Apparently. They had some big, big moves on earnings. So, last earnings... No, that wasn't the big move. Where was the big move? Was it this one? 13% up on that one. So just because it's a bank doesn't mean it behaves rationally. In fact, very unlikely. But we had one of those monster drops, didn't we, at one of these? Where was that? Oh, I can't remember. We had a huge drop somewhere. Anyway, 13% move is pretty significant here. So, yeah, earnings move banks significantly as well. So be aware of that. Not great for anyone betting on big moves. No, nope. if you bought those calls, you bought those puts, um, well, you lost $90. That's that's the name of the game. Choppy day today, likely. What do you think about BBBY? I think it's a load of garbage, to be honest with you. Uh, can you make money out of garbage? Yeah, you can. I mean, up 21% pre-market. So what could you do? Well, say you could, um, maybe you think it's going to come down again. 
So what you could do is, you know, buy a really cheap put, um, I don't know, sort of Delta 15 or something. And then, um, you know, so that would make you money below, what is that, $2.13 or something. So this thing really, really comes down significantly. Uh, and then, you know, if it if it starts coming down, you you start to make some, some serious money there in theory. But I mean, do you want to gamble on it? Like, do you know something that I don't know? Probably on BBBY particularly. Uh, but yeah, you can set these sort of things up where you essentially pay very little uh, for for the, the in, but it doesn't look like a particularly appealing trade to me. Uh, I, I wouldn't bother, with, to be honest with you, on something like BBBY. But that's how people aim to make money on these massive moves, right? So you see something that moves 10, 20, 30%, you can set up these little little trades again and again and again, and then on average, you might walk away with a profit. But it's a, uh, it's a it's it's an exciting way to trade. Is the stocks better a good determination of being boring, Mike? Um, yes, sort of. Um, better stocks. We use it on our watch list. Um, basically, does it move with the market? I suppose it's, it's more like a correlation. Um, what have we got on our watch list? for that let me just lock in for that um so it just tells you like you know is there any point in buying this stock if it means, it means exactly like the s p like why not just buy the s p i suppose that's another way of looking at it but yeah it's it's somewhat useful it tells you how it moves with the market so very high beta numbers uh, tell you that's exciting um weighted alpha is also something to look at in terms of recent performance um that's also something that i sort of look at but yeah uh, can be a useful little nit tidbit of, of, of that. Make money in garbage. Invest in waste management corp. Says Robert. Um, sounds like you're um, you're uh, promoting that, Robert. Um, I haven't looked at that, but there has always been money in 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 garbage. I've been successfully mean reverting scalping while we wait for good long view information to put on verticals, Jay. Yeah, that's the thing to do. I mean, if you look at like the NASDAQ at the moment, the NASDAQ is trading about three standard deviations below its performance against the S&P. So long NASDAQ, possibly, but you do obviously need to have a bit of stamina for that because you don't know what's going to happen in, in, in the short term here. If you guys have just tuned in, here is the data of all data. Inflation rate came in the low end of expectations, core inflation also at the low end of expectations. Uh, inflation rate is negative month on month, but that's what we expected, quite frankly. At the same time, however, jobs are still being created or at least made up on paper, one, one or the other, uh, at very significant levels. So not quite the clear cut number that we wanted, but is 6.5% inflation better than 7.1? Yes. Is a lot of this driven by energy prices coming down yes so labor market is still the inflation scare uh for us uh felix where do you look at um call at walls different on platforms like big charts yahoo and max Payne. um honestly the best thing to do is to look in your broker that's really what i, I would recommend uh, is just literally look in your brokerage because then you you know the data Uh, Yevgeny saying, has there been any revisions to jobs, CPI, always? Endless revisions to everything, especially jobs. They revised, they found a million jobs the other day. Sorry, they found a million jobs were missing the other day. Um, regardless, downturn is intact ahead of soft earnings. Big picture. I, I think... The slightly longer term, I, I'm still fairly bearish on this, but there is a, a, a case to be made for a bullish January. So it kind of depends on like what time frame you really look at. But at the moment here, this is what the, the data is coming at. We're actually down a quarter point. So the data certainly, and I think I think the reason for this is that we went up 4% the last two days. So we've, we've done the rally. Um, we've probably done a little bit more than we should have done. And, and now we're just kind of like, bobbing sideways. So we're not really breaking through any of our resistance levels here, going down a little bit lower. So not quite the rally people were hoping for. Do you think China reopening is inflationary for the US? It's a double-edged sword. So does it drive up commodity prices? Yes, it should. Things like copper and oil and stuff like that, cement and you know that kind of stuff. 
At the same time, it does, of course, ease up the supply chain if they do stay open and shipping lanes and so on stay open. Uh, and that would reduce cost inputs for, um, you know, a lot of American companies, right, who've been, been struggling to get their hands on uh, on uh, Chinese-made parts, which, quite frankly, you can't build anything without Chinese parts. So, looks like we're returning to buy the rumor, sell the news. That's a good thing. Means market stability. True. Inflation plus down markets so are good for the Fed. Yeah, I think the Fed might be a little bit happy with this because of this morning reaction, at least. And I mean, the, the day hasn't uh, isn't out yet because you know the first chart I showed you guys here this morning is um, is this one, and that's that blue line here is financial conditions, and they've been easing a lot since like September, October. Uh, we're below the Jackson Hole speech kind of thing. And remember how tough. JP came out there, right? He really hit us over the head with a with a with a cricket bat or something, uh, and and that's because financial conditions had eased a lot, and he didn't he doesn't really want that. I think this was Jackson Hole. I think this red line here. So we're below that. E lower financial conditions, uh, e freer, easier financial conditions, and even the thirty year, which is the white line here, yields have come down a lot. So it's not really in tune with the Fed saying rates are not going to be cut at all this year. The market just isn't believing the Fed. So the Fed is either going to have to accept that or the Fed's going to have to do something about that. I think generally speaking, the market moves the Fed and not the other way around. But, you know, that could not could be could be different. Philly Fed president about to speak. Um, interesting. I, I would expect some stronger words there. Uh, Martin there. I don't enter trades as much as I used to as I've had a few losing trades in a row lately. How do I change my mindset? So trading is like significantly mindset. And, and what I would recommend is seriously do some paper trades. It's always good to do some paper trades and, and sort of build your confidence back up on that. But also if you are just more risk aware, that's also a good thing. So you have to kind of think like, why am I more risk aware? Uh, is it because I'm scared or, of losing money? Or am I just a little bit smarter with what's going on in the market? The market continues to be relatively unpredictable, right? So there are some things that we know. And the more we know, the better. But, um, you know, today, a lot of people were expecting a massive rally, and we're not getting it. So maybe go a little bit longer on your expirations and go into a little bit more boring stocks, um, maybe paper trade the earnings season, stuff like that, I think can help to build up your, your confidence there again. M4 saying credit markets are still accommodative. Indeed, um, my canary in the coal mine. Indeed, all commodities going up. Why? Um, Probably the dollar, because we were um, expecting now here, yeah, dollar is coming down, which makes sense, right? Because we are now thinking, well, rates are not going to go up. Maybe rates are going to get cut sooner. So the dollar loses uh, some value there. Also, the euro going up, uh, which makes the dollar go down. Um, why? Because here in Europe, where I am, and the French Riviera, blue sky, it's warm. I've had the window open all morning, no heating on. It's absolutely delightful. But I was exercising and... What does that mean? It means energy prices have tanked. I was going to put up a chart, but I didn't bother in the end. Um, energy prices in France and Germany are pretty much back to pre-crisis levels. So that just takes away all that inflation. Uh, we are now no longer expecting a European recession. We're expecting a modest growth for the year, like 0 0.5, 0 0.6%. So that changes the whole story. Michael says, time to pull off all the close orders for de-risking. Puts and or calls, not financial advice, Michael. Uh, appreciate the advice. I'm not sure I entirely know what you mean. Come to Italia, says Samuel. Uh, could see a short squeeze today, tomorrow. Possibly, but I think we need to be above 4,000. For the for the SPX, uh, and I think that's really the question: is Are we going to do that today? The trading at three nine nine two, so it won't take a lot to go above four thousand, and then I think yeah, there is a chance to go up a bit more, maybe to four thousand one hundred, and then you get that massive 
uh, expiration uh, in uh, next week for SPY at, at 410. So I think that'll be a real like potentially reversal. So I'm, I'm still not hugely optimistic in the medium term here, but this January rally, I think it gets decided today. I think that's kind of what we're seeing. So above 4,000, rally is here to stay. Below 4,000, I'd say uh, probably not. Okay, let's have a quick look at how the market's reacting here. Pre-market, what's going up the most? Right, seriously. Um, Walt Disney up 2%, Netflix up 2%, Polster up 1.4%, AMD up 1.4%, NVIDIA up 0.8%, NEO up 0.6%, um, Banks up about a third of a percent, Palantir up a third at $7, Citigroup pretty flat. And then what's what's bleeding Someone's always hurting. Roku down two and a half. VIX volatility down 1.7. So the fear is dissipating. XPANG down a percent. Baba down a little at 0 0.8. Um, Tesla 0 0.1. So how about Amazon? Amazon is still up 0.64% at 95.70. So that's still going strong. So yeah, I think some of the expensive tech is looking looking pretty positive here. Saber Wolf, yeah. If you are if you were earning sterling and you've been buying dollar the last year, it's yeah, it's uh, it's a bit of a tough trade. Um, I agree with you on that because the, the sterling stuff come really really cheap. Uh, so I'm buying. I've been buying sterling. <laughs> so that's the other way around. Inflation's on point, but jobs data is still below. Indeed, that's a nice way of summarizing that up. Um, Melvin's got some tip there. Jobs data not weak enough compared to forecast. Indeed, jobs data came in strong once again, yet again. So that's, I think, the real inflation story is, is, is um, you know, is we're at greed, by the way, guys, which is always something to watch out for. Extreme greed is a good time to sell. So here is the data once more. The problem is the, the jobless claims, 205,000 lower than last month, or last week rather. Uh, so jobless claims is significant. You know, we were at 1.7 million, right? Um, unemployed, essentially. Now we're back at 1.63. So that just keeps coming down. So I think there's a lot of shenanigans going on with the labor market statistics, quite frankly. But the data is what the data is. So the market kind of has to react to it. Grum, you're completely right. Wage growth is what, what matters. But that's what people are worried about, right? When the um, jobs numbers go up. Horizon says, the Fed still takes some more rate hikes. I think they'll very likely do two more at least, um, another half point up at least. I, I, that would be my, my thought. Then, um, yeah, Melvin, I think, is here um, pumping something. So... Uh, we're going to remove him. Bye-bye, Melvin. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, essentially, they need to bring inflation down pretty quickly. If you the, the 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 real situation, I think that nobody really talks about is is this: if inflation stays elevated, you have a few theories with that. So, high inflation, what does it do? If we get high uh, higher rates. Should be an R. What happens? Well, one thing that happens is that government debt goes up significantly. Why? Because the US pays for its debt with debt. Uh, so if the cost of the debt goes up, uh, that would actually make the debt bill, the debt maintenance bill, if you to, to speak, you know, as big or bigger than the uh, Department of Defense, this budget, which is pretty staggeringly large. So that's one problem with that. So they need to kind of get the rates under control quickly. And I think that's part of part of the thought here. If they don't do that, we're in trouble. So what are they there for doing that? They're, they're putting the rates up faster than anybody, anybody has. And that will or should cause a great big juicy recession. Now, recessions from an investor point of view are not necessarily a bad thing. So yeah, initially, 
share prices drop. But what does that mean? Well, it just means it's a buy opportunity, doesn't it? You can buy great companies at lower valuations because multiples get compressed. And then coming out of the recession, eventually, you know, rates will get and people get unemployed and so on. And then rates will go down again. They start catting them. And then as rates go down, share prices go up. So where do you want to buy your shares? You want to buy down here or do you want to buy down there in the recession? Well, I, I think I'd rather buy them when they're cheaper. But most people don't. That's always something, something to bear in mind here, I think, really. Uh, the U.S. debt ceiling. Oh, they're just going to negotiate that up, and everybody gets a bit of a bit of a brown paper envelope, you know, along the way. The way that usually works. Forex currencies are rallying. Um, sterling and euro. Um, yes, and we would expect that the euro has got some way to go. I think. Scott is saying, are you investing for 50 years or for 50 days or for 12 months? That's very, very important. So I think if you're buying stocks, uh, so sort of my, my time frames are, are, are essentially these stocks. May I write, please? 10 years plus. Uh, I think that's the only sensible, if I'm allowed to write, Microsoft says no. You know, they're, they're saving money. They're saving digital ink. Here we go. 10 years plus is I think the way to do that. If you want to make income the way I trade options, I'm looking at about zero to 21 days, mostly on our, you know, 85% probability trades. That's kind of what we are, what we're doing. Now you could also do slightly longer term, six weeks kind of type things. Um, eight weeks if you wanted to be a bit more directional. But for me, those are the two worlds that make sense. Everything in between and sort of like seems risky, I think. Would you do a VIX trade if it keeps going down like this? Yeah, I think at some point we might be might be starting to buy the VIX again. Absolutely. Uh, a, a long VIX trade might, might be might be an interesting one. I think it might still be a little, little bit early. Uh, but yeah, Martin there, I, I agree with you. There could be an opportunity. But I was kind of expecting for VIX to actually go up in Jan. Um, so far, it hasn't really done that. Um, let's have a look at it. So January starting here, we're actually coming down. We're, you know, maybe we're retesting the 19. Uh, so it's it's an, it's, an, it's, a, it's a curious world where things are changing every single day. But at the moment, yeah, we are, we're very much, much, much heading down there. Would CPI affect Chinese stocks? Yes, yes. Uh, and and the the... It seems strange, doesn't it, that U.S. inflation would affect Chinese stocks, but all stocks, um, all stocks are, that are listed in the U.S. at least, are um, compared against risk-free alternatives. So risk-free investments. What are risk-free investments? It's the U.S. Treasuries. Uh, and therefore, if the yield goes up on U.S. Treasuries, the value of stocks goes down. It doesn't really matter whether they're Chinese or German or French or American. It's the same, it's the same story. So that's always something to bear in mind. Uh, Bob, am I using 21 days as expiration dates? No, I use I use 45, but um, I, I get out at 21 because that's when your gamma starts to bite you in the ankles. What do you think of an Amazon trade with IV at 96? Earnings are Feb first. Joe, yeah, I closed out of Amazon yesterday with a with a with a loss on the on that one because it was just kept kept going up and up and up. Um, I mean, IV isn't going to come down, so that isn't really ideal there because earnings is relatively soon. So you kind of expect that. Um, so if you pull up Amazon and, you know, Amazon has its own, has its own VIX. Did you know that? Amazon VIX. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Amazon, Amazon at the bottom, Amazon VIX at the top. So that's kind of an interesting thing to look at and you can kind of get get see that. So yeah, it's, um, at these levels here, how high, high has it been? It's pretty pretty high, right? It hasn't really been higher 
since uh, October, sorry, yeah, October 2022. So, yeah, big jump here today on, on, on Amazon, right? No, yesterday was a 5.8% jump, exactly. That's why I got out of the trade. Uh, there's a very nice downtrend. Uh, that's what I was trading it. But then today seemed like too much of a, of a risk to hold on to it. And it is up 1.4% pre-market. So yeah, it would have hurt some more. Um, whether or not that'll get turned around is, is a good question. I think there is the resistance at 96, I think, from an options positioning point of view, from memory here, John. Um, that could, after the options expiration at the end of the week, could give us a reversal. But I didn't really feel like sitting through that. No new questions today. That's the first. Andrea, indeed, feel free to ask one. More downside on bad data. How do you think EVs will do in 2023? Okay, those are good questions. We can definitely touch upon that. But let's just have another look at QQQ here before we turn to single stock. So QQQ is now up 0.6% pre-market. So we are we are seeing this now, and with a bit of reflection, as still somewhat positive the inflation data. Um, to two seventy nine. What about on the S and P? Four thousand is the important line. We're about four thousand. We close above four thousand. The party continues. Uh, I would say. Do you play video games? No, I haven't played a video game since I was about sixteen. I think probably fifteen. Um, nothing against them. I just don't have the time for it. To be frank with you, um, I run about three businesses, and I like going out and seeing people and enjoying my life. I don't really want to spend any more screen time uh, than, than absolutely necessary. Um, Robert, that's a great question. Should we all smash the like button? Oh, well, let's, let's weigh the pros and cons of that. It, you might burn a calorie, which could be dangerous for your health. And um, on the flip side, you could make me very, very happy. So yes, I'd love it if you smash that like button. Thank you very much on, on that. Uh, so, okay, uh, EVs, uh, you guys were mentioning Neo there. Let's have a look at Neo. So What's the story with NEO? Up 1.3% here pre-market. Uh, obviously, the reopening of China is benefiting them somewhat, but you know we want to be up there in the 20s. Um, bit of a disaster, I think, from management and in, in how they guided. Uh, they guided uh, to higher numbers than we achieved. And then they revised the guidance down and then they beat the revised guidance. But that just smells of shenanigans to me. So I think there is frustration with, with management. Even Deutsche Bank, who are the, you know, the, the biggest fanboys of, of, of NEO, uh, are basically saying we are frustrated with the numbers, but we still think market's going to grow. And they are actually fundamentally doing a good job with all the cast they're releasing and so on. Um, I think they are fundamentally doing a good job with product, but they need to focus on execution. And that's the... That's the risk with with um, any kind of engineering business, really, right? Sorry, I think that was my doorbell. Sorry, one second, guys. I'll be right back. Uh, so we're back. Um, so yeah, Neo. I, I, I really think you know you need to see probably three months in a row of really good delivery data to rebuild confidence here. I think that's the way I would look at it. Uh, but the general reopening of China and the general putting the delisting saga behind us, which should obviously be official sometime this month, uh, should be good for the whole Chinese sector. But we're not seeing a lot here, right? We haven't come up that much. Okay, we started at nine. Now we're at twelve significant but say we overlap kweb the same scale you see how much the index has taken off and neo has not so this is a management problem the load of cucumbers you ship to winston he would be very grateful for that the market went 2,000 points up. <laughs> um, any thoughts on ASML? Let's have a look at ASML. ASML. Oh, nice. 2% up. Um, yeah, I, I, I've never really 
gone into this fundamentally, um, but from a chart point of view, you're above everything. You're above every moving average there ever was. So that looks pretty good. So what's your what's your resistance from my perspective there? That 13th of December high, which was uh, 6.43, we're just above it a dollar. So we, you want to close above that. Um, that's really, I think, important to kind of cement that. And then I'd have a look at where the options market's positioned as well. Matters, um, beaten down small caps. Yeah, the, we're seeing the most shorted. Um, I don't know if I can pull that up here. We can, can we? No. But the most shorted stocks are, are, are squeezing up the most, which is true. Uh, at some point, unprofitable tech is going to be a beneficiary as rates get cut and we come out of this. Might be a little early for that still, but yeah, something to something to look at for sure. Um, but you're seeing here this morning, you know, who's rallying the most? Lucid, Coinbase, Polestar, Upstart, Rivian, uh, Chargepoint, Netflix up, Hillian up. So, you know, you're getting a lot of the more like techie end of the market rallying up here as well. Alrighty ho. So let's have another look at um, let's have another look at QQQ here just to see what we're doing there on the minute chart. Pre-market looks a bit more dramatic like this. So we are we are now significantly up 0.7%. And on the S&P also at 4,015. 4,000 is what I would watch out for today. That's the, that's the big deal. You want to close above that if you want to keep the party going. Uh, big options expiration at the end of the week as well, which I think might limit the rally somewhat, at least to sort of 4,050, 4,100. But there we are. How is it that you are different, doing different from day trading? Lost in BKK. Okay, so for me, day trading, mostly it's, okay, day trading. What's the, what, what do they do? Well, well, one thing is you pretty much stare at charts all day, which I don't want to do because I'm busy and I like to do things in my life. Um, most trades uh, have a, 50 50 probability right it's up or down you don't really know anything about about it uh, what i generally speaking do is high probability options trades that have sort of a on average probably a 10 to 20 day time frame Whereas day trading, by its nature, it's, it's, it's days. So I don't need to look at the chart every day. I, there's just really no need for it. Um, I have an 85% probability on my trades. Uh, so that's very, very different. So say you wanted to trade you know, the S&P here. Uh, you could buy the S&P right here, right, at 4,010. And you could say, well, it's going to go up. It's going to go down. It's 50-50. And you look at the charts and all the lovely squiggly lines. Um, I wouldn't do that. If I felt bullish on the S&P, I'd buy it maybe at 3,900 down here somewhere. And then I would make money if we drop to 3,900 or if we rally up. Uh, and that's what increases my, um, my probability significantly. So I think, I think there is some real advantages in the option setup that you don't have with, with pure stocks. Righty ho. Okay, so quick summary on, on, on where we are with all of this today. Here is the data. Uh, and inflation came in at 6.5% on the low end of expectations, core inflation at 57 And um, inflation month on month is negative, which is actually what we were expecting it to be. But, 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 jobless claims, uh, which means new people unemployed, 205,000 is lower than expected. And the continuing jobless claims, so essentially unemployment, again, lower, falling once again. So, You've got this balanced, tight labor market, yes. Energy prices coming down, yes. Not exactly the clean cut answer I think we are hoping for, but markets are starting to warm up to it. And so we're getting a little bit of a juicy rally here. If you want to learn a little bit more about how the market really functions and how we make the kind of returns that we make, we made 126% on capital employed last year. 
check out phoenixrunsalog slash coaching. Just book a call, have a chat with us when we'll walk you through and answer all of your questions. And I want to say a huge thank you for all of you tuning in. I appreciate it. And I hope to see you tomorrow live pre-market like every day.